assalamu alaikum ji uh, i hope you all are doing good uh, so today's video is about controversy analysis paper and um, i'll try to be brief about what controversy analysis paper and how you need to proceed with this assignment so let's start um, so basically controversy analysis paper is something that you guys are already working on and you have already worked on your controversy analysis um, start when you started researching for your research articles and you kind of started your annotated bibliography so controversy um, analysis paper is um, well in encom encompassing all those papers all those analysis that you are already working on this is something not new but rather you will start your um, material and you will keep on building up uh, and kind of um, include and incorporate your own opinions as well into controversy analysis paper um, so let's see the basic, um, let me revise what OBPL, OPEVL format is that we followed um, and I'm sure that most of you have uh, familiar yourself with and what annotated bibliography and what OPEVL um, format stands for. So O is the origin, um, the source of the article, P is the purpose of, um, of that particular research article that why that research has been conducted. Um, and of course, there has to be a valid reason of doing that. And in, in research objective, you will be able to identify the research purpose. And V, v stands for the value. A value in terms of that what value it adds to the existing knowledge uh, and the body of literature. And L stands for limitation. I would like to emphasize on, uh, on the, I have gone through many of your assignments and I saw that you guys, um, some of you, not all of you, but some of you mentioned that um, there, there is not any limitation or there is not any weakness you can find. So I would say that please um, um, try to read and reread and then reread that article through your critical eye because the more you read, the more you will better get, gain the insight of what um, the research design was and how the researcher um, kind of tried to address that problem and how you as a researcher would be able to establish your niche and how you will be able to evaluate uh, the, the kind of methodology that researcher is um, applying in, 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 in his study design. So unless you will not read and reread and read through um, between the lines, I would say, uh, you will not be able to evaluate the limitation. All right, G, let's move on to the next part, the basic structure of um, CAP. CAP stands for uh, Controversy Analysis Paper, CAP. Um, so basic overview is the grading criteria, which is 10%. Length is five to six pages. Of course, it goes without saying that you need to double space, 12 um, times Roman, and then APA format. Um, just key is follow the basic guideline of APA format. Of course, I'm not asking you to uh, apply the advanced level of APA, but the basic is basic is where you include and incorporate, you know, incorporate the citation style. You follow that double space time new Romans, and that's it. The deadline is the 10th April, and uh, the word limit is 12, uh, 50 till 1500 words. Um, how to structure, how are you going to structure your CAP um, uh, essay? So it needs to have uh, an introduction that should clearly stated um, your thesis statement. So your thesis statement is, is, is important, and I'll come back to this point again uh, in my later stages. And then coherent paragraph is paragraphs in an order that 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 kind of exhibits the history and current status and the st status and the language of the controversy that is being under discussion that is being under scrutiny that is being under uh, your consideration. So you need to talk about it. You need to dwell into this issue and the be um, followed by the brief conclusion. Um, and I'll cover these three parts later on in my presentation. Uh, so the purpose of CAP is um, is you to demonstrate your expertise. And I have assigned you the task. I have assigned you the topics. You are working on those topics. You have studied. You have researched. You have come up with your annotated bibliography. And you are now starting assuming the role of an expert. You know better. I don't know what issue you are dealing with, which way you are dealing with, um, and in what aspect and what, what context you will apply to that um, that research into your domain. So you need to be very careful about um, once you um, claim something because you are now an expert in your own field. So try uh, to be the reporter 
and it is highlighted in yellow because you are the reporter for this paper. The information that you are providing is very critical, very crucial, and you know the crux of the research that you are going through. I might not be as a lay person. I might not be able to know the DMG that you are working on. You better know. So you should be very careful about because you need to assume the role of an expertise and a reporter as well at the same time. Um, all right, Jean, then, then let's move on to the structure of CAP. It will, as I said, that introduction, probably this is um, the repetition of the same slide, the uh, introduction followed by the paragraphs and the conclusion. What thesis statement should be? A thesis statement is a persuasive thesis statement that contains an opinion and the reason why it is so. And the reason why it is so. You need to be make it persuasive, practice that. And with practice, you will be able to come up with logically a sound thesis and that will of course make you um, so you better know um, that how you're going to deal with it and um, what sort of um, what sort of um, dynamics it requires you to 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 complete this um, um, cap project that you will be working on so your thesis statement is not your opinion on the issue it is simply a statement that encompasses the purpose of this statement so you need to practice this thesis statement before you delve into and do not just say that um, and do not i don't expect that from the very first in the very first go that you will be starting uh, giving me um, a very coherent piece of uh, some thesis statement it will take time it will take practice it will take a lot of time and it, you need to uh, spend time you need to polish that and you need to um, um, thoroughly see how you can make it more persuasive. All right, let's move on to um, uh, the next part, which is about um, um, organization of CAP project. How are you going to organize it? So you are going to organize in a way that it, it should cover the three areas. Um, the Number one is the history of controversy. Number two is the status quo. And number three is the language of controversy. And uh, to be bit, uh, to explain you that what these things are, um, how you going to how you can uh, go about it. Um, uh, what you can do is let's go to history of controversy. What history of controversy is? Um, where this uh, you need to in, in, incorporate history in a way that you need to identify that where this history comes from so where did this controversy come from person year legislation law uh, legislation means law what are the historical connections and key movements in the development of this controversy so if you're working on poverty so you need to see the historical background of poverty and how hunger has affected uh, poverty and what major fam famines um, uh, have been in the history that hit. Um, and if you're working on um, diseases, uh, disease alleviation, you need to know that what is happening right now and how Corona has affected all of us and what, how it has um, sort of uh, uh, pulled back all the um, human history into one single capsule of, of, uh, of, uh, and retained ourselves into a cell. And you need to identify all these things. You need to see, and you need to see it with a critical eye. Um, so you need to see who are the key players in terms of like if it's legislation, uh, then you need to see that are the policymakers who are the responsible for doing this, um, or the general people who are being affected by that policy. If it's in terms of like person, um, or if in terms of like year, you need to see who are the key players, and key players means all key stakeholders as well. And what are their views and perspectives? And uh, when I say that history of controversy, and I'm sure that you have studied um, those 10 articles, you will be, and definitely you are going to find all this information in, in those 10 articles if you have studied and if you have done your annotated bibliography. Um, let's move on to the next slide, uh, which is about um, um, uh, status quo. Status quo, um, you can Google this term before you move on, before you proceed, because this is this sounds a little bit fancy, but um, it is uh, it refers towards um, the current state, the how we deal with 
um, with the how we challenge, how we question the the power, the people in power. So how what are you going to do in status quo? You have to identify the claims and remember um, the class in which we studied um, different types. We covered different types of claims and we came up with that there are four types of um, if you ha happen to attend that class, you must be knowing um, and you must be aware that there were there, there were four major claims that we covered in in that class in that particular class. So number one was definition, factual, value, policy. So I don't need to repeat it, but um, to give you a little bit glimpse of what claim is, I have already up given you this link. You can go through that Prezi uh, PowerPoint. Sorry, Prezi software. This is a kind of presentation. Uh, the same presentation that we uh, that I did uh, with you guys. So definition claim is the claim in which there is that is re relevant to definition. Um, factual uh, related to any fact value in terms of like every human being is affected by the value. We do have value systems. So any claim that is relevant to value and policy claim related to policy and legislature. All right, G, let's move on to the next part, language of controversy. How are you going to, what will be the language of controversy? Um, so having said that, you will be the experts. You will be the, you have the expertise. You develop that expertise over passage of time. You need to know uh, what are the major terms and you are going to elaborate all those major terms. If you think that you need to make a separate heading and you need to, there, if you're working on certain uh, I would say like uh, the terminologies that are not easily understandable by the layman. You need to um, identify that. You need to, you can make a separate heading under which you will write definition. Definition, not definitions, definition. And you will make all those and you will explain, you will give your own understanding and your own definition, not Google's understanding, not Google's or any dictionary's definition. I don't want it. I want your definition because you are assuming the role of an expert you are the you have developed that niche of being an expert in the in the field whatever you are dealing with so make every attempt to elaborate so if you if a layman would be able to uh, come to read your um, term paper as i will be a, um, a layman i'm not the expert in your field that you're working on so i should be able to know that which technical terms or jargons that you're dealing with and have you ever like, um, have you ever given a separate description of that or not? So make an attempt to understand how people use specific terms and phrases because every specific, every um, field has specific uh, terms and vocabulary. You need to identify, I might not be, because if you're coming from mass communication background, you, you, you better know that mass communication has a different set of words as compared to people who are major, who are going to do their major in biotech. Uh, or in pharmacy and so and so forth. I hope my point is clear. Um, so concluding paragraph will um, include the emphasis, this emphasize the significant key findings, that key findings in terms of what, um, what those research papers that you worked on, they are key findings. And I'm, I'm sure that all 10 papers were dealing with the same issue will be coming up and there'll be an overlap in terms of like findings. Um, um, you, 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 can uh, let your reader know that what were the key findings in terms of like um, whether there were any key findings or not. And if not, then you need to identify those. And then summarize the major, major argument. You need to do that. And again, you need to come back to, to you need to come back to the same um, restating and reappeal your thesis you need to restate your thesis and the argument that you started working on. Um, with that, uh, with that, I hope, um, um, all right, gee, I hope uh, with this uh, note, I'll be able to explain uh, what the task uh, is at hand and what you ought to do. Um, and uh, I have already uploaded um, it on Moodle. And let me tell you that this uh, particular assignment CAP project will be um, connected with um, with Turnitin software. So I'll be looking into your similarity index. So please don't ever uh, try to plagiarize. And I'll otherwise I am going to detect that through the software. So um, pretty much from uh, pretty much that's that's it from my side. Uh, if you have any question, any query, any confusion, do not hesitate to post me. Get in touch with uh, through WhatsApp group or 
um, um, you can write me an email and uh, I will be happy to get back to you. Um, thank you very much. Take care.